So in today's session, we'll be starting off with the discussion of the microwave concepts and that we'll be starting off with the discussion of uh, microwave uh, tubes. Uh, then uh, we'll uh, go ahead uh, with what are the problems with, uh, with the uh, regular uh, tubes, that is the vacuum tubes um, at very high frequency. Then uh, what is the concept which is used in uh, these days uh, of microwave devices in order to generate these microwave signals. So what is the concept they look out for? And then we'll uh, start off with the klystron concept in which we'll be discussing uh, regarding the reflex klystron oscillator, the modes of its operation, modes of oscillations. Uh, so these are just a few things we'll be discussing. Uh, then uh, we'll uh, continue with the uh, rest and uh, we'll be discussing regarding the mechanism. So these are just a few things to uh, name around. Uh, wherein uh, we'll be starting off with the discussion. So now, uh, first of all, uh, uh, remember uh, what does microwave actually imply? The name itself tells that it has something to do with micro. The wave has to be in micro. So what does this micro stand for? So it is basically relevant to the wavelength. The wavelength is in terms of micro. The wavelength is in terms of micro. And when we speak of frequency, right? When we speak of frequency, frequency is in the range of gigahertz. It is in the range of gigahertz. So that is uh, what uh, we can look out for. So this is uh, what will be uh, happening in uh, these conditions. That is why it is called as a microwave because the wavelength will be in terms of micro, say micrometer. Uh, then uh, frequency will be in the range of gigahertz frequency will be in the range of gigahertz so this is uh, <clears throat> in relation to microwaves now coming down to the concepts um, related to the microwave uh, tubes so in microwave tubes we basically start our discussion with vacuum tubes. Uh, then uh, the rest all uh, came into uh, picture uh, wherein uh, electron uh, uh, tubes were uh, present. Then uh, came your waveguides and other stuffs wherein uh, the vacuum tube concept was uh, not used. So slight changes were made based on that the next things were achieved. <laughs> So in vacuum tubes, what happens is, if I have to represent it in diagrammatic form, So overall, uh, this is 
say a, a circuit a representation of the vacuum tube in which uh, you will be having a gate will be having a gate will be having a cathode and you will be having the plate uh, so here uh, uh, here you have uh, the uh, inductances and the capacitances of the circuit but along with this what happens is uh, you have uh, uh, say inter electrode capacitance uh, which comes into play that is uh, uh, in your electronic circuits uh, you might have discussed regarding uh, these concepts uh, wherein uh, these are the imaginary capacitances which are present which actually affect the overall circuit operation so those are also present over here so this capacitance is the gate to cathode capacitance that is inter electrode capacitance uh, then uh, we have uh, capacitance which is present between gate and the plate then we can have capacitances which is present between the cathode and the plate so these are the inter electrode capacitances which are present now these inter electrode capacitances actually pose problem in circuit operations now uh, vacuum tubes basically operate in the range nearly to 1 gigahertz but they don't operate beyond that now what happens uh, when you try to operate these uh, vacuum tubes in the gigahertz range now there are some problems which come into existence it is because of these capacitances because of these capacitances and because of the inductances so it is uh, we specify the problems one because of the inter electrode capacitances then because of the lead inductances which we have in the circuit the inductances which we have in the circuit okay uh, then uh, we have third problem uh, which is basically the transit time so what are these relevant to now what happens is uh, uh, because uh, we are operating at a very high frequency the inter electrode capacitance comes into play now since it is a capacitance right since it is a capacitance its impedance is uh, given by 1 by 2 pi fc for example its impedance is given by this now uh, what happens is if this frequency is very high if this frequency is very high if the frequency say is in kilohertz that will uh, that will give some impedance value if frequency is very high what happens to the impedance impedance is reduced impedance becomes if frequency is very high impedance gets reduced now because there is a low impedance path because there is a low impedance path for example in this case there is a low impedance path what will happen is this vacuum tube so whatever signal you are providing will be passing through this the imaginary capacitances which we call as inter electrode capacitances so what is happening is basically this is shorting this path it is providing a path for the signal to flow around so this will not come into play during that time so imagine uh, if the frequency is in hertz it will not pose any problems its effect will be very less the inter electrode capacitance if you go to kilohertz also not that much effect maybe the efficiency will be reduced as compared to the hertz condition so next uh, if you go in the range of say gigahertz if you go in the range of gigahertz the frequency is very high giga implies how much 10 raised to 9 10 raised to 9 so this one is very high due to which the impedance will be reduced by a very large extent due to which the operation of this vacuum tube will be affected this will be affected <clears throat> so this is one problem of inter electrode capacitance now another problem uh, which arises is because of lead inductances now when we observe uh, what happens is if i just observe this capacitance along with this inductance 
if I observe this, what is happening? They are appearing to be in parallel. So it is like a parallel LC circuit. It's like a parallel LC circuit. So now when uh, we have that parallel LC circuit, now if the frequency is very high, what is happening is this is getting reduced. Uh, that is the impedance. Impedance is getting reduced. So if impedance is less, then what happens is this LC circuit, that is uh, the lead inductance along with the uh, capacitive uh, interelectrode capacitance, what happens is it gives rise to a feedback circuit. It gives rise to a feedback circuit. Now what does, what happens with this feedback circuit is this feedback circuit because of its nature, that is LC circuit when you do the analysis, it gives rise to a degenerative feedback. Degenerative feedback. So this degenerative feedback, what is happening in uh, this case is, in degenerative feedback, since it is de degenerative, what happens is the efficiency, the efficiency reduces by a much larger extent. The efficiency of the tube reduces by larger extent. Uh, now, uh, when we are speaking of, uh, say, high frequency, transit time also comes into play. So one is interelectrode capacitance. Because impedance is reducing, it is providing a path for it to flow around due to which the efficiency reduces because of that also. And additionally, because of uh, the uh, interelectrode capacitance and lead inductances appear as, uh, as though they are in parallel, that is parallel LC circuit. Now, what happens is this gives rise to a degenerative feedback. Now, because of this degenerative feedback, what happens is the uh, <clears throat> efficiency of the overall vacuum tube reduces. So this is what is happening in this case. So now uh, coming down to the next point, that is the transit time. So what is meant by transit time? What is meant by transit time? Now transit time, uh, it is the time required for the electrons to travel from the cathode to the plate. That is we have cathode and we have plate. So we saw in the circuit over here, that is we have cathode, we have plate. So the time taken for the electron to travel, say between the cathode and the plate, the time taken between this cathode and the plate. So that time, that is the time taken by the electron, time taken by the electron to travel from the cathode to the plate gives rise to what is called as, what is called as transit time. Uh, so now uh, what happens is uh, uh, this transit time is dependent on the frequency of operation. It is dependent on the frequency of operation. Now in this case, what happens is if the frequency is low, if the frequency is low, uh, the transit time will not affect much. So if I just represent it in uh, this form, this is a low frequency signal. This is a high frequency signal. Now, if I just consider it as positive and negative, so in this form, right? So this is how I can uh, realize it. So here uh, I have a lot of time as compared to the high frequency signal. So here frequency is high. So here, if I just see uh, in a given cycle, the transit time should be over, say either in the positive of cycle, negative of cycle, depending on the entire Thing, it should be completed. Now here what happens is uh, uh, the uh, electron has a huge amount of time say during the positive half cycle if I just start off electron has a huge amount of time to move from the cathode to the plate. It has a huge amount of time because the signal time is 
very high. If frequency has high, frequency is low, the time period of the signal will be less. Now, if I go for very high frequency, what happens is this time period will be reduced. This time period will be reduced because of which what happens is uh, the tubes face a problem. Now, if the transit is not complete, if the transit is not complete, then you will not be able to operate the vacuum tubes. You will not be able to operate the vacuum tubes. So here, uh, what happens is uh, due to this condition, you might observe phase shifts. You might observe phase shifts at the output of the vacuum tubes. So we have to take care of these conditions when we are operating in microwave range. So this is uh, what is happening uh, in this case. So here we can uh, see that uh, <clears throat> Uh, the problems what we are observing, it is uh, with respect to the first one that is inter electrode capacitances. Then uh, the next one uh, it is with respect to the uh, lead inductances, and the next this thing is the transit time. So these are the three effects. Apart from this, again we have uh, some other pro challenges also when we are operating at very high frequencies. So here are vacuum tubes. If I start operating at very high frequency, that is in the microwave frequency. These are the three main problems which arise due to which efficiency will be reduced due to which uh, uh, the uh, transit time poses a problem. So these are the aspects what we have to look out for. So in order to uh, uh, cater to this problem, right, uh, what uh, they do is uh, uh, they try to adjust some of the parameters of the vacuum tube itself. Now to cater to the transit time, what they do is, uh, that is to overcome the problem, that is to overcome this phase shift problems, what they do is, they try to increase the distance, that is, uh, they try to increase uh, the uh, distance between the electrodes. Uh, what this does is, it increases the transit time for the electrons, that is, it gives a little bit more time for the electrons to move around, frequency is fixed. But if you're moving, if you're changing the distance, right, it will take a little bit more time due to which phase shifts can be controlled. But uh, by doing so, what is actually happening is uh, you are basically uh, trying to reduce the inter-electrode capacitances. You're trying to reduce the inter-electrode capacitances. You reduce the inter-electrode capacitances. You uh, reduce the... Uh, you reduce the inter-electrode capacitances by changing by uh, increasing the distance between the plates. You're trying to uh, increase the distance between the plates. So by doing so, what is happening? You are reducing the inter-electrode capacitances. At the same time, you are adjusting the transit time. You are increasing the transit time. So, so that the phase shift can be adjusted. So this is uh, one uh, this thing. And apart from this, uh, if you try to reduce the overall size of the vacuum tube, to try to reduce the size of the vacuum tube, if you're trying to reduce this, what happens is uh, it reduces the power handling capability. Because at microwave frequencies, right, uh, the devices tend to heat up because the frequency is very high. You might have uh, heard about microwave ovens and all, right? They use microwaves to heat, uh, say, to cook or to heat the elements. So they use for that purpose. At microwaves, microwave themselves uh, uh, heat up the entire system. So they, there has to be a mechanism to handle that power. So if you try to reduce the tube size, right, what happens is power handling capability also will be reduced. So we have to take care of all these things. So in order to overcome these problems, right, uh, what they do is uh, they use a concept called as uh, electron velocity modulation. Electron velocity modulation. So what is meant by electron velocity modulation? So first of all, what is meant by modulation? 
So modulation is change in some of the characteristics. So in your communication, actually how we uh, define modulation is, modulation is change in the characteristics of the carrier signal, keeping other characteristics as it is based on the message signal. So here it is slightly different. So modulation is pertaining to the changes which are happening. So modulation is pertaining to the changes which happen. So what is that change related to? It is related to the velocity. I try to change the velocity. Velocity of what? Velocity of electron. I try to change the velocity of what? I try to change the velocity of the electrons. So that is what I am trying to do. So electron velocity modulation is related to changing the velocity of the electron by some mechanism. So how do I go ahead with this? So since electron is negatively charged, negatively charged, so what happens is it gets attracted to positive terminal or the positive electrode and it gets uh, repelled, repelled by negative electrode. Now, for example, uh, if I have a positive plate and if I have a negative plate and if I place an electron in between, if I place an electron in between, since it is uh, negatively charged, what happens is this plate repels this towards the other end, opposite end, whereas this plate will attract this electron, will attract this electron. So this is the concept what you use in electron velocity modulation. This is what you try to use. So that is uh, indirectly, uh, this concept is nothing but you are using the electric field concept. You are using the electric field concept in order to achieve electron velocity modulation. So now in uh, this case, right, uh, how do I uh, go ahead? So we have an electric field, which is from positive to negative terminal. Actually, it will be in the reverse uh, direction. So this will be the electric field. And uh, so these are the electrodes. That is positive electrode and negative electrodes. So now what I do is, uh, if I place an electron between in this field, if I place an electron in this, if I'm able to do that, if I place an electron in this field and try to adjust the voltage of this electrodes, that is I try to adjust the potential of the electrodes. So based on that, what is happening, say for example, uh, if the electron is traveling in vacuum, if electron is traveling in, in vacuum, what is its speed? It is three into 10 raised to eight meters per second. So this is the highest, but uh, when you're placing the electron in uh, the electric field, it will be much less than this. So it might be like a 2.3 into 10 raised to eight meters per second, just for example. It will not be exceeding three. It will not be exceeding three into 10 raised to eight meters per second. Uh, since this is not a vacuum, since we don't have any vacuum. So what happens is its speed will be less than this. So if I'm able to place an electron and uh, make it travel along this direction, right? If I make it travel in uh, between the, in the electric field, that is in this electric field. Now what I uh, do is I have plus minus and I have a electric and I have an electron over here. And uh, we have the electric field, which is present. Now what I do is, uh, suppose I shoot these electrons from an electron beam. Uh, if you remember cathode ray oscilloscope, CRO, the oscilloscope. In that you have an electron beam which uh, shoots the electrons towards the screen. And uh, in between you have the plates, horizontal uh, deflecting plates and vertical uh, deflecting plates. So potential will be applied to that. Based on that, you'll be able to observe the signal. The same concept applies over here. So now what you do is uh, using an electron beam, you have shooted this electron. You have shooted this electron and you have made it to enter into the electric field. So once the electron enters the electric field, right? Now what is its purpose is, uh, I have to modulate this velocity. 
I have to modulate its velocity. Now, for example, it is traveling at 2 into 2.3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. I want to increase its speed. So what I do is I increase the negative potential. I make the negative plate more negative. So for example, if it was minus 10 volt, I'll make it still more negative. So I'll make it minus 20 volt. So I'll see what happens. If I make it say minus 200 volt, what happens? So when I do this, right, what is happening is this electron, since this is highly negative, if I keep on increasing, what happens is, so it might be 2.3 for minus 10 volt, then it might be 2.4, here it might be 2.6 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. So what you're doing is you are changing the velocity. You are changing the velocity of the electron. Now, if I want to reduce it, now what you do is you make this potential more positive. You make it more positive. Uh, now, uh, here one thing to remember is more negative, more negative, uh, more positive has is slightly having different meaning. Uh, for example, uh, if I have voltage, so in uh, reflex list on right, you'll get the get to know actually what this concept is. So here we are trying to just understand that. I'm, I have to look for electron velocity. I have to look for electron velocity modulation. So that is what, what I'm trying to look out for. So here we have plus minus, we have an electron over here, we have the electric field. So here, so electron beam has shooted an electron into the electric field by changing the potential of these plates, you can adjust the velocity of the electron. So what you're doing is this is the main concept which is utilized in your microwave devices. That is electron velocity modulation is the concept which is utilized to generate the microwaves. So this will be looking in the micro, uh, in the next topics, reflex klystron. Now here one thing to remember is uh, more frequently I'll be using uh, say uh, I'll be using a highly positive or a highly negative terms. That is highly positive voltage, highly negative voltage. So what does this imply? So in a microwave, what happens is we have a concept called as a repeller voltage. Repeller voltage. So based on this repeller voltage, right, either the electron increases its speed or the electron reduces its speed. So it is all dependent on the how, how much is the voltage which is applied to the repeller plate. So here what I want to specify is, uh, suppose I have a voltage of 20 volt, say plus I'll take, it's 20 volt. I want to increase it. That is, I want to make it more uh, highly positive. So what I do is say, if I make it plus 200 volts, two plus 200 volts is highly positive as compared to plus 20 volt. So this is uh, in terms of this, uh, this thing. But when I, when we come to negative, right? Negative voltage, for example, I have minus 20 volt. So for minus 20 volt, if I want to make this voltage highly positive, highly positive or uh, it is just an example. So I'll make it say minus two volt. So here you can see that minus two volt is highly positive as compared to minus 20 volt. So here highly positive, highly negative is not dependent on the sign. It is dependent on the magnitude of the voltage. It is dependent on the, uh, sorry, it is dependent, not magnitude. It is dependent on the voltage, what you are applying. So it is like in your number system you have, right? Zero, one, two, so on here, minus one, minus two. So you have some uh, these numbers, right? So if you just observe, uh, two is greater than its left number. 10 is greater than say two, which is towards its left. So similarly, if you just observe, zero is greater than minus one. Similarly, minus two is greater than minus 10. So that is what uh, we have checked out. So if we have minus two volt and minus 20 volt. So which one is higher? Minus two volt is higher. So here, uh, what I wanted to specify was if it is minus 20 volt and I change the voltage to minus two volt, 
so it is like i am making the voltage highly positive highly positive because minus 2 volt is greater than the minus 20 volt uh, if i want to reduce uh, that is i want to make it highly negative so again uh, the same concept comes into play now suppose it was minus 2 volt i change it to minus 20 volt so now this is like i am changing the voltage to highly negative voltage because minus 20 volt is lesser compared to minus 2 volts so that is what we are looking out so because uh, this terms right uh, i'll be using uh, now and then for repeller voltage when we discuss reflex klistron or any other klistron right uh, there is other types of uh, uh, devices that time will be coming across these terms so that's why we have to look out for uh, these aspects so highly negative highly positive uh, means this thing because in repeller voltage what happens is a uh, repeller voltage will be applying voltages in the range of minus 300 volts to say even minus 150 volt so we'll be applying this voltage to the repeller plate so it uh, can even go uh, in positive terms can even go in positive terms but uh, there are some limitations over there so here uh, since we are applying uh, negative voltage this concepts we should remember that is which one uh, we could we, in which direction when i move whether it is highly positive highly negative because these terms i'll be using again and again so here uh, what we are doing is uh, whenever the electron is uh, moving in the electric field whenever it is moving in the electric field whenever we apply highly negative voltage what happens is the electron's speed increases when i apply highly negative when i apply highly positive right what happens is the speed reduces if i apply highly negative the speed of electron increases because it gets repelled more the negative voltage the uh, more the rippling happens due to which the uh, electron travels with a much faster rate then if i go for uh, say highly positive voltage then speed of the electron reduces because it gets uh, because it is not getting the rippling effect that is it is not getting repelled at a very uh, faster rate as compared to the highly negative supply so that is what is happening in these cases so this is just a introductory part of uh, microwave tubes and uh, the concepts on which uh, the uh, say uh, the uh, microwave devices try to operate so in the coming four classes we'll be starting off with the reflex klistron uh, what is its operation what is its mechanism uh, what is its mode of operations okay mode of oscillations then the mode curve so these are the things what we'll be discussing okay and uh, then we move ahead uh, with the next part uh, uh, actually in the syllabus they haven't specified the two cavity klistron they are specified only a single cavity klistron but in uh, your old question papers right they have asked for two cavity uh, uh, klistron uh, amplifier also so we'll be discussing that part it will be only analytical discussion with some diagrams and then we will be moving ahead with a few other concepts which are related to microwaves okay so in coming forth classes i'll start off with these discussions so after this right there is one important topic which will take a lot of time that is the transmission line equations uh, there is a derivation which it is a simple derivation but there are too many things to be done over there the same thing will be repeating for uh, uh, for identifying some parameters almost the same steps will be repeated so here uh, this uh, derivation will take around some four classes i guess so if you miss any of the class and you come for the next class you have to prepare for the previous one and come because it will be continuation so when we start off with transmission lines right so this is what we'll be looking out and uh, once we finish transmission lines right uh, it is interdependent with the smith chart so if you have to understand smith chart you have to understand transmission line equations 
so those are simple uh, derivations and few uh, concepts come over there so that is what we'll be uh, discussing over uh, there in coming fourth classes okay so in uh, today's session uh, this is all uh, what i wanted to discuss <clears throat> i know it will uh, it is slight uh, 